what type of camper is best for full timers? Well, if you watched my part one of this video, there's actually five different styles of full timing. And my answer to that question is gonna be different based on the type of full time camper that you are. Hi, I'm Jacob. I'm a certified RV technician and the owner of Rigger RV Repair. I found that about a quarter of the repairs I do are completely preventable. My goal in starting this channel is to teach people how to not break their RV so you can stay out of the shop and have more fun camping. The first type of RV full-timers, what I call RV park nomads, are people who travel frequently, but they're usually camped out at an RV park and they're plugged into shore power. If you're a RV park nomad, I highly recommend a residential refrigerator because they are more durable appliances, you will get more life out of them than a 12 volt or a gas absorption refrigerator. The downside of a residential refrigerator, when you're on the road, the refrigerator has to run off of the batteries. A typical RV battery setup will only run the refrigerator for a few hours before it dies. If you're planning long road trips, you're gonna to wanna to make sure to not only have a large enough battery bank to run the refrigerator for the length of time that you need to travel, but you may also wanna add solar panels because that will help extend the duration of runtime on a smaller battery bank. If you need to go for a gas absorption refrigerator so you can go on longer trips with smaller batteries, you really want to avoid cold weathers that can damage your refrigerator permanently. So for the second type of full-timers, boondockers, and this includes people who are living remotely on BLM land or people who are overnighting at Walmart, parking lots, or casinos all the time. My tip for boondockers would be that you should buy a motorhome rather than a towable RV. Motorhomes are just inherently better set up for off-grid camping because they tend to have massive propane tanks for running your appliances. They always have a generator on board so that you can run everything without plugging into shore power. There's a lot more roof space available for putting solar on your RV to help with your electrical needs. And there's a lot of redundant systems, different ways of charging the batteries in case something breaks. Now, I recommend a gas absorption refrigerator for boondockers. They work really well off-grid because their primary source of heat is burning propane rather than using the batteries. The downside of gas absorption refrigerators is that because you can't operate them in temperatures less than 25 degrees without risking ruining the refrigerator, if you're on the road, you really have to travel accordingly and not go places where you might have a severe cold snap. Fun fact, I actually boondocked full time for about a year and a half when my wife and I got married in our class A motorhome. Quite the experience. The third type of full-time RV dwellers is snowbirds. These are people who travel seasonally. They only move like a couple of times a year. For people who are snowbirds, because you're primarily plugged in at an RV park and not traveling as much, I really recommend a residential type refrigerator. You don't even need a big solar array or battery bank in order to run the fridge while you travel because if you're just moving twice a year, you can always turn the fridge off and unload all the food for the few days that you'll be traveling. If you want to avoid having to refill your propane frequently, which can be a annoying if you're parked at an RV park and you don't have someone to come and fill it on site for you. It's better to actually use a tank type Suburban or Atwood brand water heater that has an electric heating element. The big downside of tankless water heaters is there is no electric option, they're gas only. So by going with a tank type water heater, you can turn on the electric heating element and not have to worry about refilling your propane nearly as much. The fourth type of full-time RV dwellers would be permanent campers. These are people who have a camper at a location where it stays year round and they never have to move it. In this scenario, I actually recommend buying a park model RV rather than a typical travel trailer, fifth wheel motorhome. And by park model, I don't mean like a destination type trailer that looks more like an RV but with a bay window in front. Park model RVs are actually constructed very similar to residential houses with full two by four walls and shingle roofs and standard residential windows. In fact, all the components are things that you can buy at Home Depot. They're really made more like a mobile home where they're manufactured on a frame with wheels and you can move it and set it up and strap it down to the ground permanently. But because the square footage is small enough, it's not considered a permanent residence and therefore is a park model RV. The maintenance on these, the energy efficiency on these is way better than any other RV on the market, which is why if you're not actually traveling, I recommend a PMRV for full-time dwellers. The fifth category of RV full-timers would be migrant workers, and trust me, this is the 
toughest. Your job is dictating where you go and you can't stay away from bad weather. It's very, very, very difficult to full-time an RV in sub-freezing temperatures. So maybe you're not a migrant worker. Maybe you're one of the other four types of full-time RV dwellers. If you know you're going to be spending some time in cold weather, like sub-freezing temperatures, listen to this part. It's really difficult to take a travel trailer or fifth wheel and put skirting around it and insulate the plumbing well enough to weather freezing temperatures. So I actually recommend a motorhome because of the cargo bays underneath, it naturally is better suited for colder temperatures and how it manages the holding tanks and the plumbing system. One of the challenges of RV full-timing in extreme cold temperatures is that when your furnace is running, it requires a certain rate of flow of propane but when propane tanks get cold, it slows down how fast that propane can vaporize. This has led to furnaces stopping functioning altogether in extreme cold temperatures. If you have a motorhome, this helps avoid issues like that because it has such a larger tank, it actually doesn't run into this propane undersupply issue. If you're camping in a fifth wheel or a travel trailer in extreme cold temperatures, then you really need an extra like 100 pound cylinder to help avoid these propane undersupply issues when it's cold for your furnace. If you're in this migrant worker category, you definitely don't want a gas absorption refrigerator. You definitely do want a residential refrigerator. You want the residential for the durability because you're using it day in and day out, year round. Gas absorption refrigerators, one thing a lot of people don't know is that in temperatures less than 25 degrees, they can just stop working and even permanently damage the cooling unit. I also definitely recommend getting a camper that has a Four Seasons package on it. Four Seasons just means that the walls are thicker, have more insulation. Usually it means that the windows are double pane and more energy efficient. And then underneath it'll have more insulation and probably tank heaters to keep your holding tanks from freezing. I can see the comments coming already. Jacob, you've told us what types of RVs to buy, but not what brands. I'm making a new video series about the different quality of RV brands and models. So if you want to see those videos, be sure to subscribe and vote for what I should review in the comments. So if you're a full-timer and you found these tips to be helpful, be sure to subscribe to my email list so you can get my Don't Get Stranded checklist. This covers four of the most common reasons why I get called out to stuck campers and how you can avoid this happening to your RV. Folks, thanks for watching. Happy camping and don't break your RV.